In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of setting up a script that will allow you to queue all of your different shots into one batch render. So basically with Maya, you can only set up one frame range uh, from a particular camera at a time, and then you have to render that, and then wait, and when that's done, come back and set up the next one. Well, you have this sequence set up, you want to be able to output these all at once, so you can set your computer to render and leave it overnight and then come back or leave it for a few hours or whatever it takes. So all this script does is it looks in the camera sequencer and it grabs the frame range, it grabs the camera, it gra grabs the shot name, and allows you to queue all of that into a batch file that you can kick off and then come back when the whole thing is done. So to get this, <clears throat> uh, grab the file, I'll put the link in the description below, download that, And then I'm going to cut that. I'm going to put it into Documents, Maya, and then in this scripts. So there's a script folder in each individual uh, version of Maya, but there's this scripts folder up here. And if you add scripts here, they work for all versions of Maya that you have installed. So once you've added it, if you've got Maya open, you need, just need to type rehash. And that basically just tells Maya, look back in your script directory and discover any new scripts. In order to use this, all you have to do is type batch sequence. Just like that, capital S. Press enter, and it'll spit that out to, the, um, to your project directory. So you do need to make sure that you already have a project set. If you don't have a project set, it's just file and then set project. But this has gone to where I expected it to go here. So I'll pop over here. And this creates this file right here, multi-shot batch render dot bat. I'm going to right click. I'm going to just open this in JEdit so you can see what it is. All it does is create a simple text file that just has the render command. So it's the render command for every one of these. I'll just get this out of the way too. For every one of these shots. So you can look and basically it creates them in the order that the shots were created. So they're not necessarily sequential. Um, so what I'd recommend doing is coming back through here and changing these names to something that makes sense. So right now there's not much order. It'd be really difficult for me to see these. You see ID 1, ID 2, ID 3. Well, my first shot is actually 1 to 45, so that's actually my second shot listed here. So I would either just have to know that or give it a name that makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and do that really quickly. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to give, I'm going to rename this shot um, to 01 opening um, and this is fine actually the names are fine I'm just gonna add the numbers so it's really clear so unlike other areas of Maya where you can't start with a number this little thing will let you start with a number and that's very useful so we can sequence these um, on disk okay once that's done just come back down to the timeline I'll press the up arrow and that just grabs the last command and I'll press enter and that will overwrite that file that we had on disk so just come back down here and right click, open with JEdit again. And so now you can see they're numbered. So I can see my second listed shot here is actually my first shot. So this makes it very easy to organize and definitely highly recommend you numbering your shots so that they come out in a way that's really easy to identify. But just to take a look a little bit closer at this, let's just look at this shot. It's from one to 45 and it uses so tall cam. And you can look here, uh, this one is going to start at frame 1, end at frame 45, and it's going to use the so tall cam, and it's going to be named 01 opening. So that's basically this. It just takes this name. I append an, uh, an ID, a specific ID onto it, just because you could name two shots the exact same thing here and accidentally overwrite um, files. So by adding a, a, an ID on here, it just makes sure that nothing gets overwritten. <clears throat> Okay, so some of these other shots, just so you can see here, this one that goes from 108 to 124, it's at 400%. So you can actually look down here, 108 to 124, by frame 0.25, which means it's going to render four frames for every frame, giving you that 400%. So all that stuff is just sort of automated. It just kind of spits all of this stuff out into a batch file, which will then work. The one thing that you may have to do if you're not using a lab machine, is make sure that Maya is added to the system uh, path. So you can press Windows pause break, and that will bring up your system uh, panel here. You go to advanced system settings, and then environment variables, 
and down to path. Again, none of the lab machines will need this, but if you're using your own machine, you might need to modify this. Uh, you click edit to the path, and then push on down the line until you get to Maya. It should be right at the end. So here it is right here. So everything from the colon, so wherever it's installed, all the way to the bin. So Maya 2016 bin, because the actual application actually lives in the bin directory. So once that's added in there, uh, that means that your system will recognize the render command, the command render when it's issued. So in order to run that, essentially all you have to do is save your Maya scene and double click on this file. And I'll just go ahead and do that so you can see what that looks like. This is what it should do. Basically, you'll just see this command prompt popped up, and then you'll see each individual frame uh, come across here, and you'll just see one by one that they're getting done. You can open your image directory or wherever you're rendering, and you'll see those images continue to update. If you don't see this command window stay open, if it just pops up and then disappears, typically that means that Maya has not been added to your system path. Make sure you follow those steps. Go back, add Maya to your system path, and you should be good to go.